Okay, thank you very much. I'm super nervous, but I'm also taken aback. Because today my sharing team is actually my, my life testimony around family, restoration of family. So just now when the pastor prayed about interceding for family, I think God is super relevant. Super relevant. My theme today is, it's not me, but Christ in me. My situation in my life, God restored my relationship with my family, especially my family. Today, my testimony actually, I'm 44 years old this year. I married uh, five to six years ago. I was three times imprisonment. When my youngest day, when my, my teenage time, I was, uh, uh, I joined a gangster, a street gang uh, in Beach Road. So I was, uh, I can't find any goal, especially I think, during my younger time. So I start to be on the street, mixed with people that I thought is good, that I, I, I long for recognition. I long for recognition. So I became a gangster, and slowly I start to take drug. And drug indeed not only destroy me, destroy my whole family. And the brokenness in me, only Jesus meant it together. My first imprisonment was 2002 to 2003. It's only one year. But that one year, I did not take it seriously. I did not reflect on it. I thought it's okay. It's just like a holiday camp. When I go out, maybe I become a bigger gangster. I can grow in my rank. So, but when my, during my first imprisonment, uh, actually I was, uh, I came from a Methodist school. I came from a Methodist school. So I heard about Jesus during my secondary school time. There's a uh, chapel service during my secondary school time. So when I was in prison for the first time, they have chapel service also. So there's this song, as a deer panders for the water. So I resonate so much that I, I indeed, I feel that, hey, something is in, in me is Christian or something in me, oh God, I have something in me. But the seed is like falling on thorny ground. Like the sower falling on thorny ground. I receive the word, I go out of the chapel service, I live my own life again. So that was my first imprisonment. My second imprisonment very fast relapsed very fast relapse. I go out not even about one year. I was caught trafficking. This time round, the second imprisonment is 2004 to 2008. The government sentenced me to six years and four months imprisonment with rotan, with stroke in the batok. So that time round, I fear already, I scared already. I think I'm about 20, late 20s, I, I do, but I do not know how to change. I don't know, but I, I, I saw that a lot of my friends, or some of my friends, actually go to church after their imprisonment and become better. So I thought church is like a medication. If I release, if I go to a church, I take medicine one week at a time, I can be safe for the next six days. But indeed, it's opposite. Because I did not, I'm not serious in my faith back then. I was just out for two years. I fall back to my old life. It's indeed like the sower again. The seed fall on hardy ground, rocky ground. It grew a little because I was there. I came to church. I played church like Sunday. I punch card. Then maybe Friday, I also go to a cell group but it did not take root. The things in my life, the wants, the desire, a lot of things. So I fall back to my old ways again. That was 2008 after I released. Then not long after, 
I break the law again. I was caught again. I fall back into drugs again. I fall back into my old way of life. Womanizing, drugs, friends, drink. I stop going to church. And then, same thing, very fast. I go back into the prison again. This time around, the prison term is seven years and nine months. I don't know how I can finish that sentence. That was 2011. That was 2011. So within that sentence, when I was serving in the prison, I actually give up all hope. If I can change, I will change most likely the first time imprisonment. If I can change, second time, maybe can change already, but, but the third time imprisonment, I give up all hope. My thought is that even I release from prison, most likely I will just come back again in a few years' time because I was labelled as hardcore prisoner. I was serving my LT sentence. In prison, LT prisoner is hardcore drug addict. Though I don't look like, but indeed I am because of the sentence laboring. But thank God, there is an encounter during that period of time. I do not know how. I still continue to pray, but my prayer is half belief, half wavering. Though I'm not serious, but God is serious. So during my imprisonment, the last second or third year, I've forgotten, my grandparent passed away. First, my grandmother passed away. So during my grandmother passed away, my sister came to the prison and asked me if I want to visit my grandmother wake. So they have compassionate leave. But with this compassionate leave, comes with some, entang uh, some things that you need to do. They need to shackle your hand, the, the prison staff need to shackle your hand and shackle your leg so that you can travel in their van and go to the funeral and pay your respect. So I was taken aback, I was thinking, should I go or should I not go? I have already caused my family so much burden, so much brokenness. My whole family actually is so broken to me, I can't talk to my father. Whenever I talk to my father, we will start quarrelling. I can't understand my mother because I was not there totally. Even when she's in pain, when she needs to go to hospital, when she needs to go to somewhere, the clinic, I was not there. I thought I was responsible, but in fact, my action is totally different. Even my sister, two years older than me. She's serving in the church. Previously, no. At home, we have no communication, zero. We can't communicate with each other. I do not know why, because we are so, I'm so self-centered in a way. We are so selfish. The way we live our life, we thought we are so gang-ho. We thought we are so royal, but our royalty is always towards the wrong thing the wrong people. Our priority is totally mixed up. But through that encounter, God did something in my life. I agreed to visit my grandmother in the funeral because I do not want extra regrets in my life. So during the trip, when they shackled me and put me in the van and sent me to the funeral, I was one person in the van. I was enclosed. The van cannot see outside because prison van, if you know, inside is dark, outside you cannot see. You don't even see the main road, you don't see everything. That was like a feeling when I read the book of John, the woman in the well that met Jesus. And Jesus told her everything about her life. In that van, I experienced that same thing. I was thinking through the whole life thing flash in front of me. What did I do? And I didn't even, I say I love my parents, I say I love my grandmother, but I did not do anything for them. And now I'm going just to show respect. I'm like, I'm like hypocrite. Standing there, wanted to show respect, but yet I did not do anything. 
God just showed that into my life. The whole journey was so hardened. My heart was so hardened. The things that flashed in front of me was like, wow, what did I do? So I recognized that something, some, something is wrong with my life. Something is wrong with my life. When I reached the funeral, that part is the best. I thought my family will reject me. I thought my family will say something bad about it, but they did not. My uncle, my auntie, they actually opened up and received me, asked me not to do that again. And then when I was kneeling down in front of my grandma coffin, I so wanted to cry, but I cannot cry. I don't know how many people here experience that. When you so wanted to cry, but you cannot cry, the tears come in your heart, but not in your eyes. That is how hardened I am. That is how broken my family was. But thank God that God changed everything. I was released eight years ago, eight years till now. My last imprisonment after my grandmother's funeral, one month later, my grandfather died also. So my grandfather died, I need to go to the funeral again. So the whole process go back the same way. I was shackled, I was in the, in the, in the van, the whole woman in the well thing come all over my face. And I travel all the way to my grandfather's funeral. I kneel there, I cannot cry. I go back to prison. I was put in a one single, single person cell. Something resonates, some music, some, I, I'm not sure, but I think it's a hymn that I've heard. And I kneel in the prison cell, cried. I was broken. But God changes don't just change right away. It takes so much time, so much intention, so much difficulties, trial. But it teach me one thing, that it is through trial that we will appreciate the love of the Lord even more. So upon my release, I'm still not sure. I don't know how to change. I do not know I need to go to the right or I need to go to the left. But in God's word, in Joshua, he said, don't look to the right nor to the left, but meditate upon the word of the Lord day and night. So I start praying. I pray that I will do something different. I don't want to do the same thing and hope for a different result. Because I know if I do the same thing and I hope for the different result, things will not happen. But God is good. God sent a friend a close friend, a mentor that come to visit me in my halfway house. He told me one thing, do you want to come to a church? Do you come to work for me? Do you want to go to my cell group? My cell group member is here also. So I thank God that God softened me and I agreed. I have other choices, but I, I pray that I have the strength to say no to other choices but choose something that is in God's will. Then I start to realize that our life, if it's not in God's will, if it's just me in control, things will never work according to, to, to His will. So upon my release, difficult time, struggle, because I'm trying to learn how to live a normal life, which I do not know and I don't understand. But I thank God that put friends that have experienced, experienced the same road that I, I'm going through. There is a cycle. For us, previous life is night is day, day is night. But now, we want to change. Day become day, night become night. So I need to wake up at 6.30, take a bus, take a train to the place I work. Then I work for eight to nine hours. I try my best. Then I take a bus, take a train, go back home. Then I need to go to church. Then I need to take a bus, take a train, go to church. Then after that, go back home. This is something everybody is doing, majority people. But to us, at the age of 37, 
This is totally alien. This is totally alien. But God is good. He allowed me to hear the word, persevere, and grow, and continue to cultivate the soil in my heart. It's not everything smooth, definitely. If I say everything is smooth, I'm, I, I'm just lying. Throughout, there is so many trial. But I thank God of restoration of my family. First, my sister and my relationship. Recently, we take part together in a community work, together. Then one day, we are in the car. I was driving. He's, she's sitting beside me. My wife is sitting at the back. I, my sister and me, our conversations surround the goodness of God in our life. We are saying that I, how God is good, how God, we are, we are talking about the parable, we are talking about hey, how we can do this, how we can do that. Previously, zero conversation. My sister's life is also difficult. My sister's life is not like beautiful. Since young, the brother go in and out of prison. She is the one that taking care of the mother. She is the one that spent time with the father. She is the one that carry the burden of the family, not the brother. But because of this, God put us back together. The crack line in my life becomes so beautiful. The brokenness that God pays together becomes so beautiful. My mother especially. My mother was baptized in the church here. I'm thankful that God really hear our cry. That He says that one person believes the whole family will be saved. We are not a born Christian. We do not know Christ previously. But when Christ stepped into the family, things meant. And now, every morning, I will text my mother. I do not know how you relate with your mom. But my, my, my message to my mom is very simple. A emoji of love. At the age of 44, I send an emoji of love every day to my mother. I do not know how. If it's me, I will not. Previously, I aspire to be a gangster. I want to be wow, a, a taker or something that wow, I can control some gang member. I want to be a very manly man. But God, broken you, change your heart, stir you, squander you, to be soft, to be intentional in your way of love. It, it helped me in such a way. And now, even sometimes I send parables to my mother. Then there is the occasion when she asks me, hey, how come uh, Jesus, uh, why can be so like that? Uh? <laughs> to die for people that he do not know. That is the conversation between a mother and a son that previously is only hurt, is only pain. At one point, I believe he don't even want to see me because when I go into the house, it's only pain. When I go into the house, it's like, you're going to bring trouble again. But when God steps into our life, things changes. When God steps into my life, things changes. And my father, my father, my father has the same character as me. We are playful, we want to enjoy, we want to be totally, but we cannot talk to each other. Whenever he, he tell me something, whenever he tried to teach me something, I got zero respect at that point of time. Because I don't see him, I don't see him as a fatherly figure at that point of time. But when God changes, these eight years, I slowly learn one step at a time. It's not sudden changes, but intentionally we will call each other. Intentionally we'll meet up each other. Intentionally, now, whenever she go to Malaysia or I go out of the country, I will give him a call. I will let him know that where I am. And just yesterday, I text and tell him, today I'm going to Lighthouse. I have a sharing. Do you want to come? 
And he said, actually, a few days ago, I want to ask you, oh, I want to come together already. <laughs> Though my father has not received Christ fully, but I believe the seed of love already installed in him. Not because of me, because if it's I, I cannot. It's because of my sister, the way that we talk, the way that we, because the love of Christ changed us, that my father see the love. God sent each and every one of us to be witness to him. And one of the verse that this few years touches me the most is in John chapter 1, verse 14. That the Spirit of the Lord become flesh that dwell in the community. That His glory is being shown through us. The glory of love, the character of love shown in my family. That men, all these broken pieces. If you have a son like me, go in and out of prison for 14 years of my life, from 2002 to 2016, when you are sick, nobody bring you to hospital. When you want to go to clinic, nobody take care of you. Even if you need money, your son cannot give you. Because in prison, I only have dollar. I don't have $10. I don't have $100. How would you feel? I believe that my mother is broken. The relationship is difficult to men. But in God, all things is possible. So, so this is my testimony.